Hey, what's up guys, it's Sal here and I got to meet and have a one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview with Silas Adekunle at one of Africa's largest tech conference, Tech Plus. Silas is the CEO and founder of Rich Robotics. He founded his company in 2013, starting with two colleagues. He's a first-class graduate of the University of West England and with his team, they've developed Mechamon, the world's first intelligent gaming robot. As of July 2017, his company has raised over $10 million. Uh, in November that same year, he partnered with Apple where he signed an exclusive distribution deal. Late last year, we had our retail launch with, with Apple. So if you went into any Apple store today, um, you'll be able to find uh, Mechamon in there. We've kind of kept He's not focusing on exploring more in terms of robotics research and education in Africa and the Middle East. Here's my exclusive interview with Silas. I hope you enjoy it. I just want to quickly circle back to 2013 when you founded Bridge Robotics uh, at uh, the Bristol Research Labs. Yeah. And um, you know, you graduated first class honors. You moved out of Nigeria yeah, at the age of 12. And uh, yeah, how, how has the journey been from um, moving out of Nigeria yeah. from 12 and getting major funding and getting a company like Apple to you know, securing a major distribution with Apple? How has it been? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the journey has been really, really interesting. For me, it's always been a case of following my passion and the, and the things that, that I enjoy doing. And so I could never predict that I'd be where I am today. I just uh, always had an interest in robotics, always enjoyed, tried to make sure I did the things that I enjoyed. You know, one of the things I, you know, I always told my parents was, that, you know, don't compare me with other people. This is what I love, you know, doing. And so, um, and that's why it also pains me when I see other young people who love doing something but they don't have the opportunity to really invest themselves and, and be the best version that, that they can be. I saw this Forbes article. You said you were, you know, a major part of Mechamon is emotion. Yes. Uh, I've also personally have been interested or I've had some kind of interest in new robotics, yes. which is like nervous system mixed yes. with robotics. I also saw somewhere you said you were interested in soft robotics, yes. which is also similar. Yes. Um, life-like robots, yes. essentially. So why soft robots? Why soft? I mean, so the, the, that's a great question. The, the world is designed for humans, yeah. and humans are soft. So, you know, the, the, the challenge is, if robots are going to fit into the, the world that we're in, it's going to have to be like the interaction we have yeah. with other humans. Because if, you, if robots are hard, and, and you know, there are things that you can do in terms of compliance, so when you touch a robot, it can move out of your way, but if it's not soft and, and at the same the emotion. Yeah. yeah. So, so so soft from the, the point of view of in terms of material. Yeah. So yeah. if it accidentally hits someone and oh, breaks yeah. their arm, <laughs> you have a problem. But also, second is in terms of emotion. Like the way we communicate, most of our communication is uh, is body language. You know, we look at each other, we say something, we nod, we do things like that. So we need to and there's a lot of research going into it. How do you create robots that don't just solve tasks but fit into the environment? that humans exist in. Otherwise, you're going to have to change the environment, which is not economical or scalable. You mentioned on stage about uh, how Africa is, you know, the way it is now. Yeah. And uh, I, I, also, I also like the points that you made where you talked about how health can be disrupted with robotics and how we can do like quick distribution and all that, you know, Lagos traffic. Um, what is your answer to this proverbial question? Like robots, are robots going to take away our jobs? Like, how do you answer that question? Yes, <laughs> robots are going to take away our jobs, okay. but they're only going to take away certain types of jobs. Okay. And you can look at it with a few different lenses. The fact is robots are going to take away what they call the, the four Ds, dull, dirty, dangerous, and dear. So expensive, expensive jobs, okay. because those are the things that drive you know, what humans want to do. We want things to be cheaper, we want things to be easier, things like that. So, you know, the, the, the way people can prepare themselves is to be in a field where you know, you're using elements of creativity. Like, you know, creating, so creating yeah. content creation, for example, you know, you can have artificial intelligence systems that understand and provide insights to support, okay, you know, when you, when you create YouTube videos, they tell you where people are dropping off things like that oh, to yeah. optimize, you know, your video. But at the end of the day, it's still humans that, that, and you can also look at what type of content people like. We're still human to human interaction that facilitates that content. So in the creative space, you're not going to, you know, have that challenge per se until, you know, in the future, maybe when yeah. the AI systems take over. But also government has a big part to play in that because what you don't want is a, like an economical free run where you're not phasing it properly. So there are lots of governments out there that are already thinking through policy of how you, how you manage that economically. Like, you know, you, there's a robot tax, things like that. And there are things that Bill Gates was talking about. So these are big 
challenges and questions that take a long time to consider and you have to do experiments to consider them. So again, that's why Africa needs to get up to speed, not just on creating robots, but also the governing, the policies, so that Africa isn't too far left behind and just becomes a wild west. I like that you mentioned you know, content creation because I also make YouTube videos okay. as well and a, a major part of things I learn as well are you know, all those, a major part of things that aids my work yeah. is the data I get back yeah, from yeah, no, the yeah. number of people that also view my content. Um, so, um, you're six years in Rich Robotics, yeah. um, you know, you've done all these major things. Can you give, me, give us like some three, just three points or three major things that where your th three major motivational points yeah. or key points that led you or that kept you moving forward? Yeah, I guess that the first was to was my passion. Okay. So to create this type of technology that nobody has ever seen before. So you know, exapods existed like robots with legs, but they were in the robotics lab. And I thought there there is a way because for me it was just look, this technology exists here, gaming exists here. There's a way you can put this together. And to create that technology experience which no one had ever seen before, that was the foundation. You know, mm -hmm. Just something new, something unique that could then open up different things. The second was if you look at uh, the way the robot moves. To get that reaction, you don't get many reactions like that. So a lady bought a robot and took it to, to India and she sent me a, robot, a video of the robot waving at the school. No other robot can do that and get that, that type of reaction. It's just, it's got emo emotive character to it. And the, and the third thing that I kept doing that I was most, well, I was most proud, proud of and which you know, was, a, was a big part of the, the company for me was the people that we gathered together. It was the most multidisciplinary team you could have. From mechanical engineers to electronics engineers to robotics engineers to people with PhDs to artists to software developers. So to bring that whole ecosystem to life, um, that for me personally was a, was a, was a huge learning, learning curve and also allowed me to, to have a bigger understanding of how you go from idea to actually um, execution. Yeah, you, you also mentioned the version of that, so, you know, STEM, STEAM instead of yeah, STEM yeah. as well, you know, the art part. Um, so the last question is um, Awari. Um, I like that you are bringing something to Africa. Yeah. I, I just want to ask, like, what next? What is next for Stylus in the development of AI and robotics in yeah. so, Africa? So for, for me, it's, uh, you know, what, what at the moment you can't develop advanced AI and robotic system in, in Africa, per yeah. se. So the next for me is how do you enable Education. That? Exactly. How do you create uh, the ecosystem, as I mentioned, you know, expose people to a great ecosystem and give opportunities to that. So that's, so that's the foundation, which is, you know, starting with education, starting with upskilling people, and then also then using that to you to, to try and find a way to build the robotics labs in Africa, because the purpose of labs is to do, to do research and to answer questions. There are lots of questions there, just as there are lots of questions, you know, in the UK and the US. So we just don't have the opportunity to start looking at how to answer them. All right. Cool. Shout out to Tech Plus for putting this together and thanks to Tayo Aino Films for helping out with the video. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And if you enjoyed it, do hit that thumbs up button and let me know if you'd love to see more videos like this. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.